thank you all all of you who are uh, watching this talk uh, i come from the spoken tutorial project and uh, i am here to give you a talk on how to create spoken tutorials the picture you see in the background are my team members uh, from spoken tutorial and the fossi team so uh, welcome to this talk on spoken tutorial creation process uh, i hope uh, i hope people are aware of uh, spoken tutorials if not let me give you a very brief introduction to it a spoken tutorial is a video recording uh, of any activity that can be performed on your computer screen uh, you capture the the entire process using screen casting techniques there are special screen casting software available for this and your narration gets recorded along with the video this is what we call a spoken tutorial so first of all when you have to create a spoken tutorial you have to create the outline for the entire series that is the first step to creating spoken tutorials so you have to decide what to teach okay for example if you are taking the subject of thermodynamics then that is what you are going to teach identify your target audience so in this case it would be first year students of mechanical engineering or probably chemical engineering and specify the entry behavior of the target audience uh, you need to set some barrier that your audience or your learners should know some basic uh, things before they uh, before they attempt to learn from your course so if you are if you are targeting to teach thermodynamics then probably your entry behavior would be that the student or the learner should know 12 standard mathematics physics and chemistry okay that is that much knowledge is enough for him to attempt to learn thermodynamics okay and when you create the outline you go from you move from simple to complex topics so what exactly do you include in the outline is you give an overview of all the topics that are going to be included in the series in bullet points okay you do not have to give a uh, long paragraph descriptions they are just bullet points guiders to help you know uh, and to help you to estimate the flow of whatever you are going to teach you prepare a list of topics that have not been including which you are not included also okay why you do this is for you to make notes and for you to know at a later date in the future why you did not include these topics in your series okay intersperse your presentation with as many appropriate examples as possible okay because examples really help to bring out the concept of the theory if possible use the same examples build on them in subsequent topics subsequent tutorials as you progress ahead okay now uh, a topic may have many 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 features to cover so you need to pick out the crucial and important points and those need to be explained in detail you can provide quick pointers for less important points or less important topics you need not get into the details of those okay since you are going to create a uh, spoken tutorials you can avoid repetitions you do not have to reiterate something because your learner can go back rewind if required and hear the same thing all over again therefore there is no need for you to repeat uh, you know to reiterate the learning okay so you do not have to repeat anything across the outline or across a couple of topics or even within the topic Uh, avoid spending too much time on topics which the learners can figure out on their own okay you do not have to get into the details of all of that you can just briefly mention it and leave it at that 
you could also possibly give it in assignments. So, that uh, you know they are challenged to explore and uh, find out things on their own, solve things on their own. Remember to give a number of hints to help the learners, so that it is possible for them to actually solve it through assignments. Okay. Another very important thing for you to do when you are creating a series is to list down the keywords, because this will help search engines to locate your course or your topic once you post it online. Um, I believe that all of you who are hearing this talk are faculty members, okay, probably very experienced faculty members. However, I would recommend that you get a domain review done once your outline is ready. Okay, this will help you to identify any omissions that have happened, okay, which are not intentional or there could have been some information loss which was overlooked. So, when someone else goes through the outline that you have created, it is that person is able to help you out and able to identify these gaps which can be easily plugged. Okay. Let me just uh, move out of this presentation. I will show you a course outline template that we have. So, this what you see on the screen is uh, a template that we use for spoken tutorial creation. Uh, we create most of our uh, series on software. So, therefore, our topic or our course would be on a software. Therefore, we write the first name here, the version here. So, like I said we create most of our um, series on software, therefore we write down first name. Uh, in your case since you are going to be attempting to digitize content which you teach on a regular basis, uh, you will write down the subject in this place. Okay? You will not have version because it is not a software, but yes you need to fill out target audience, entry behavior the purpose of your course, okay. in our case purpose of software, but in your case purpose of your course and the recommended number of tutorials. Okay. We also have uh, the reviewer name and the IITB team member name who is going to be assisting with this particular uh, software in our case. Uh, however, like I recommended earlier, you would uh, benefit from having an external review done when you are creating your outline. Keywords, okay. do not miss giving keywords. Uh, course objectives, like I said what your course is intended to achieve, okay. write it down because it helps you to then uh, review your course in the light of these objectives, whether your objectives have been met or any of the, you know, any of the components are missing. Here topics to be included and the reasons topics not to be included and the reasons the core example that runs through maybe a couple of uh, tutorials okay, can be put down very briefly. Uh, in, uh, in the case of spoken tutorials for software creation, we insist on 80 percent of demonstration. However, in the case of uh, uh, subject matter, we cannot uh, insist on that. Uh, but it would be nice to intersperse it like I mentioned before with appropriate examples at appropriate time, so that concept clarity sets in for the learners. Okay. And this is how we create our uh, outline. Just come back to my slides. So, now how do you write a script? Once your outline is ready and you know the skeletal form for each of your topic, you need to just flesh it out. So, based on your outline you will write the script for the topic. So, first of all you will write the title for your topic. Okay. Title should be a descriptive caption of capturing the essence of whatever you are going to teach within that tutorial. The script should cover all the features mentioned in the outline okay, and in the order mentioned in the outline. Uh, if while writing the script you feel that you know uh, this was not the right order, I should have changed it. So, please go back to your outline and make the necessary changes if you feel it is necessary to do so. 
ideally limit one topic to around 10 minutes ok. Uh, this seems to be the average attention span of learners around in this generation. Uh, read the script allow, how do you estimate ok whether my script whether my tutorial is going to finish in 10 minutes. So, once you have written out your script you just read it aloud and you time yourself to estimate the final video time. If you when read aloud if your script is around 7 to 8 minutes long then your final video time will be around 10 minutes because you will have about 2 to 3 minutes for activities uh, that you are going to demonstrate on the screen. So, the script should be written in two column format ok. Uh, we, we have two column headers for the, the two column format script, one is the visual cue and the other is the narration. So, you put into the visual cue column all the actions that you are that you want ok, all that should happen on the computer screen if it is a slight transition or you are going to switch to some other uh, you know figure or some diagram or you are going to show some um, video clip of some experiment. So, you just need to make a note of all that in the visual cue column and be very specific and describe the action correctly. In the narration column you will write exactly what you want to say for that particular visual cue. Use simple words and avoid jargon as much as possible, use short and simple sentences they are much easier to understand. Be specific when you are giving instructions ok, there is uh, you uh, if you give if you talk in the active voice it is much more preferable because uh, you can use limited words to convey whatever you want to. So, I will again switch out of my presentation and show you a script template. So, here is a script template this is what we say. So, as you can see visual cue this is the column which describes the action that is happening on the screen. Uh, use the column to display slides, use simple to understand sentences, be specific and describe the action correctly. If you are using software in the case of software we need to spell out the names of uh, menu items, dialog boxes exactly how it is spelt in the software ok. In this column the narration column you will write exactly what you want the voice over to voice over artist to say. Uh, since you will be recording this on your own there would not be a voice over artist it is for your own uh, benefit that you are going to write down. Uh, use simple words avoid jargon and all of this I have already explained. So, let me come out of this now, here is a script that was written for, is this ok? Yes, sorry. So, uh, this was this was a slide and this was a corresponding narration, here was the slide and the corresponding narration over here ok. So, basically on the slides you will just put pointers, you will not put full sentences uh, like with grammar and full stop, comma and all of that, you just say ok Akash is a tablet PC can perform whereas here you say it more descriptively in the narration column ok. okay. Now, we create slides using uh, LaTeX Beamer. So, this is one slide that we have created using LaTeX. So, this is how we do it ok. Like I said very quick pointers. Uh, no full sentences, the narration will be in full sentences whereas, the bullet points which appear on the slides can be more concise ok. So, uh, now that we know that you know we need a script, we need slides, we have created our outline. So, what else do you need to create a spoken tutorial ok, it is a very simple technology very simple methodology all you need is a desktop or a laptop an ordinary headphone with microphone ok mic input uh, 
uh, this will not cost you more than 200 at the most. That is all you need for creating, okay. You just need to find a quiet place either in your office or at your home, okay, that is all. So, you do not need any costly uh, studio setting or anything of that sort for recording a spoken tutorial. Uh, some tips for you to keep in mind when you are ready with your script, your slides, uh, you are ready with uh, you know you are you know you are in a quiet place, you have your mic, you have your laptop, all of it ready. So, there are few things that you can do to eliminate uh, background noise that is captured during recording. So, if you are using a laptop, it is advisable to disconnect the charger, because it it creates a slight humming sound in the background when you record, okay. So, it is best uh, disconnected. Remember to switch off your mobile phone, okay. This is uh, very crucial. We seem to, we have a lot of contributors who put them on silent, okay. And we think the phone will be silent, it is not so. Uh, when the phone buzzes in silent mode, your laptop will pick up that sound as a buzz, okay. So, you will be surprised to note that your laptop picks up that as a buzz, as a hum in the background. So, kindly switch off the phone for the duration of the recording, okay. So, you are all set now. Now, we come to the narration part. How do you narrate? Few pointers again, few tips again. Speak clearly and loudly enough for a person to hear if he was sitting next to you. You do not have to scream on top of your voice or you do not have to uh, speak loud enough for your voice to echo to the back of the room, none of that sort. If a person was sitting next to you, then how much of volume would you need in your voice? That is the <coughs> volume that you need to record in. Do not put on any accent, okay. Just speak in your natural way with your natural accent. It is much more pleasant to hear than a put on accent. Speak in a very friendly pleasant tone, okay. Do not come across as giving orders, just try and speak in a friendly way. Modulate your voice, okay. You can generate a lot of interest in the topic if your delivery is good. So, modulate your voice, do not speak in a flat tone because that is a complete put off for the learner. Remember the learner does not see you, you do not have eye contact with the learner, it is just your voice that reaches your learner. So, make it interesting for them. Maintain a good uniform pace for the narration, do not speak very fast and do not speak very slow, okay. Try and get to an equilibrium pace which is good enough for people to follow and uh, it should not be boring as well, you know, when we say, okay, speak slow, but do not make it a boring experience for people. And now for the recording, okay, now you have, you, you can do a, you can do some practice uh, uh, narration, okay, without uh, using any screen recorder, you can just practice narrating uh, once you have written your script, read out your script modulate your voice, see how well you can speak and how well you can generate interest, make a note of where all you need to pause, okay. So, all that has to be done before you set off on the final recording. So, for recording you can use screen casting software like Cam Studio, which is available for Windows. Uh, it is available free of cost, whatever I am suggesting here in this talk are all software which are free and open source software. So, Cam Studio happens to be one such screen casting software for the Windows operating system. Uh, you can download it free of cost and use it. Uh, you can also use record my desktop for the Linux operating system. Another tip that I would like to leave with you is record in one go, okay. Do not take a pause in your recording. Uh, since your tutorial is going to be of 10 minutes, your recording time would not exceed 20 to 30 minutes, okay. Even if you have to pause a bit here and there, uh, you will find that on an average your recording time will be about 20 to 25 minutes. So, record in one go, it keeps the 
tone of your voice uniform. Okay? If you record in the morning and you record the same day in the evening, you will find there is a variation in your voice. Okay? So, this is my recommendation that you should record in one go. Avoid recording full screen, the full screen of your computer unless it is absolutely necessary. You can <coughs> optimize the capture area, concentrate on the part that you want to show instead of recording unnecessary footage and use at least 800 by 600 dimensions for recording. Okay? Because when you record a very small dimension and the video is scaled to a larger dimension, we find that the video pixelates. Okay? Whereas, if it is in it is 800 by 600, you can reduce the size and it will maintain its quality. Okay? So, we recommend that you use 800 by 600 dimension for recording and keep the as aspect ratio at 4 is to 3. Okay? Now, uh, another uh, key factor to remember is keep low capture frame rate. Uh, every screen recording software has a capture frame rate which can be set before recording. So, uh, for our project especially we recommend 2 frames per second. Uh, which is quite good in case you are using slides, it is optimum I would say, you do not even need to go to 3 or 4. In case there is pixelation when you record, then you can go up to 4 frames per second. Uh, so, this capture frame rate that is recommended will result in a low file size, which is ideal for live streaming. Okay? It will works out to about 1 MB per minute, which is quite good for live streaming if you intend to keep your uh, course online for public viewing. Okay? Uh, in Cam Studio, which is the Windows uh, operating system screencasting software, you can also use picture in picture feature. Okay? So, you can have the camera of your laptop point to you or to an experiment or some equipment that you want to demonstrate, something that you want to show, you can point your camera to that and that will be captured on your computer screen as part of your movie, whatever you are recording. Okay? So, there are these features, there are lot of paid software which also do this, but uh, it is your choice what, what you want to use. I would recommend that you use uh, Cam Studio on Windows if you intend to use picture in picture feature. Okay. Once you are done recording, now what I would say is when you record, it is not that everyone gets you know perfect diction or uh, you know you do not, you, you get stuck up sometimes at some places, you want to turn the page, you know you want to go to the next page of your script. So, a lot of things happen in between and uh, there will be long pauses at times. You may have mispronounced a word and instead of re-recording the whole tutorial, what you can do is just start off wherever you made a mistake, you repeat that sentence all over again in your recording itself. Okay? So, finally, when your movie is ready, you just take it to some editing software and just cut off those portions which are not required in your final movie. Okay? So, you do not have to re-record, start from the beginning all over again, you can just simply repeat that line with the correct pronunciation or with the correct uh, visual cue whatever you had missed out and you re-record that part again. Okay? So, you can edit out a lot of things from your uh, final movie okay? like unwanted footage, long pauses, repetitions. You can also do other things while editing. You can add text boxes to your movie wherever required, you can have pop up text boxes, okay? uh, giving some more information about what was being explained at that point. You can also add special effects, okay? if you explore editing software, you will find that there are very simple to use uh, special effects available, which, which can just, uh, most of them are drag and drop features. So, you could try out your hand at that. Again, I would recommend uh, some 
editing software for you. Uh, one is Windows Movie Maker, okay, if you have Windows operating system, Windows Movie Maker is available to you free of cost. So, you do not have to pay anything for this. Uh, if you are a Linux user, then you can use Spit TV or OpenShot on the Linux operating system. Okay. So, um, that is about all that I have for you. So, tutorials that could help you, you could go to our website spoken-tutorial.org and please uh, look up spoken tutorial technology under FOSS category. Okay. You will find tutorials on how to use Cam Studio. In this tutorial, we explain uh, about capture areas, we explain about frame rates, capture frame rates, uh, we explain about, we give parameters for audio quality, video quality, the kind of codec that uh, you, sh you can use to get very good results. So, do go through that and make a note of all the parameters. Accordingly, set your uh, version of Cam Studio which you have downloaded with these parameters and I assure you that you will get very good results. On Linux, you can use how to use Record My Desktop, that is a uh, Record My Desktop is one of the screencasting software available for Linux operating system. Uh, probably at the end of this presentation, I will give you a small demo of, uh, of that. Uh, you can use editing software like Audacity, FFmpeg, okay, FFmpeg for uh, removal of audio, merging of video with another audio, lot of possibilities that are, uh, that you can do with FFmpeg. Conversion of file formats from one to the other is very easily done with FFmpeg, okay. Uh, you can also use Windows Movie Maker to dub into different languages if you want your content to be available to uh, students who are not fluent in English, you can attempt to, do, to dub them into different languages and you can use Windows Movie Maker for this if you are a Windows user and you can use Audacity if you are a Linux user. Um, Audacity is also available for Windows if you are uh, willing to explore that possibility. Uh, the settings inside are exactly the same on both the OS. Uh, I believe the uh, installation is slightly different, okay. So, that is something that can be easily done. Once again, this is our team. Now, possibilities that you can explore with this is, so you can create digital content using the spoken tutorial methodology. You can create digital content on just about anything that can be captured on a computer screen. Okay, you can create a digital library for any reference and you can also allow other disadvantaged college students to access this content either online or through a dedicated portal. I would like to narrate a success story. Uh, this was in my initial days. Uh, with the spoken tutorial project and uh, our team conducted a two day creation workshop in February 2010 in uh, a college in Lathur, uh, Master Dinanath Mangeshkar College and uh, we trained about 30 plus students there, it was a two day workshop. Uh, I would not even call it a computer lab, it was really pathetic that place, but, but the enthusiasm of those students was commendable. So, we ended up training them and what their faculty did was they made it mandatory for the fourth year students to submit their projects as spoken tutorials. They did that and they built a digital library over the next two years and today they share their content with all the neighboring colleges in that area and this is something. I got to know when I met one of their faculty who visited IIT for some other reason and uh, I asked him, do you remember me? He said, of course, you are the one who taught us this. So, I said, so what did you do with that? So, this is the story that he narrated to me and uh, I leave the story with you. There is a lot of possibility with the spoken tutorial methodology 
explore, uh, be innovative, think of ways in which you can actually do this okay, and bring benefit to many who are not, um, who are disadvantaged. Yeah? We thank you very much for your time. I hope this demo was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions on spoken tutorial methodology, then you can feel free to write to us at uh, contact at spoken-tutorial.org. Someone from our team will write back to you okay, with whatever queries you have, you can address to us. Our website is as shown spoken-tutorial.org. Thank you all of you for your attention and your time. A very good evening to all the professors sitting all across India and listening to this program. My name is Madhukriti Srivastava. I am here welcoming you all with my colleague Shada Sharma from Events Team of Spoken Control Project. I hope that Nancy has given you a complete idea about what is Spoken Control Project and the creation part of Spoken Control Project. Now here I am to tell you how you can organize Spoken Control workshops in your institute. But first of all, I would like to start with a vision. What is the vision of Spoken Control Project? The vision of this project is to make youth of the nation IT literate. Our mission is to empower the youth by providing a software training and increasing employability avenues. There are so many ways you can learn open source software. So why we are here? We have a special methodology called self-learning through audio video tutorials. And this project is initiated by IIT Bombay, uh, IIT Bombay, Government of India, we are funded by MHRD and this project comes under National Mission on Education through ICT. So, and the best part of this project is we are providing you this facility of doing training, software training workshop at free of cost and sitting in your own campus. It means you no need to really leave your campus and you can learn new technologies like Linux, Scilab, LaTeX, which I will tell you later on. So, how you, now the question may come in your mind, how you can organize this workshop? You must be wondering what is the methodology and all. So, here is the detail. We have already created c tutorials in the form of CDs and also with the software. So, stu uh, student or faculty members uh, can take this uh, 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 CDs, you know, by uh, by giving us a detail about their postal address. Also, now we have started a, a link through which we can download all the softwares. So the next part is, what is the best part of you know of this training program? Any two, this program is only for the two hours. Means it will not hamper your regular schedule. You can just fix this workshops in two hour of your lab lab hours. So, just you just decide the date on which you want to do the workshops, send us the request that you want to conduct this workshop. For the first workshop, we will come on Skype, we will give you the motivation and a small intro talk on uh, what is spoken tutorial project and about the software which you want to learn. And after a week or two, you can you know go back, learn on your own the remaining part of the tutorials and get back to us for a post assessment test. Now, why this post assessment test is required? So that after you know, if you, through, through post assessment test, you will know that how much you have scored and what is your knowledge about particular software. And after learn, uh, you know, passing this exam, you will be able to get a participation certificate from Spoken Control Project who will clear the 40 percent mark. So, and those who will organize this workshop with us, like the faculty who are you know just watching this video, we are acknowledging your work through a special certificate and an acknowledgement letter from our side. Because you are the people who are directly working with us and taking effort to organize this workshop in your own college or institute. Next. So here are the list of software which we are offering. We are, I am starting with the Linux, it is an operating system which is freely available, its license is free, it is uh, uh, free from viruses. We have a LibreOffice which is a 
Alternative for Microsoft Office, we have a Sign Lab, which is a computational tool required, and it is a it's substitute of MATLAB. We have a LaTeX, which is a software required to learn and you know write technical research paper. All the faculties, you sh I request you to learn LaTeX because whenever you have to write or any research paper you have to publish, LaTeX is a compulsory requirement. There is no substitute available. We have many more software like C, C++ and Java. We have Blender, which is a, a substitute of 2D animation like software like Maya. We have a GeoGebra for school children. So, what is, you must be wondering what is the purpose, like what is the purpose of an open source software? The purpose of an open source software and especially through this program, we want to save, we want to tell you that we want to save lot of money of an any academic institution which they are using to buy the proprietary software. Like if you use Linux or LibreOffice in your uh, institute, even in administrative area you can save lot of money and that money can be used for welfare of the student, for buying new infrastructure and many more purposes. And you will be happy to know that till date we have covered 3500 workshops all over India, 2500 colleges has been covered and 1 lakh student is already trained by spoken tutorial project. So, I hope you can see the importance of this project all across India and there are 3 major states, uh, first is Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra, they are the leading state in organizing this workshop. But I do not want that only 3 states should be a leader, I want every state should take an opportunity and learn this software. So, it is my sincere request to you, please organize this workshop in your college, it is for the betterment of student, because by learning this software, student will be getting benefit in their placement activity, whenever they will be having placement, they can be placed in good companies. Student can become an event manager also and third thing is using this uh, technologies, they can make many more projects, which will be helpful to their, you know, regular uh, curriculum activities. So, uh, here I'm, I am ending my uh, part of the, uh, the pr uh, presentation. My colleague Shada will continue and she will tell you the nitty gritties of how you can conduct workshop. So, I would like to just tell you about that, how you can start such workshops in your college. So, the first question will come to your mind is, uh, how we can just avail this facility in uh, your own college. So, I will suggest that first teacher should train themselves. So, first they should have to get familiar with their, uh, with such of the first softwares with themselves only. So, after getting familiar with such kind of softwares, they can conduct training in their college for all the staffs uh, um, coming over to following by the other students uh, by department covering each and every department. So, I would suggest first that they should, uh, all the faculty should uh, come forward and take the training first of all and then they can cover uh, department wise all the uh, students and all the, uh, uh, by covering all the college eventually. Okay, so uh, the other way is also they can, uh, if you have covered your college then if you would like to cover a bigger area nearby you. So, if you are a university, then it is better to channelize through a uh, vice chancellor. You can circulate, you can make a notification in your website uh, or uh, in your uh, anywhere, you can pass such kind of circulars to ne nearby colleges or rural areas that you are just offering such kind of uh, uh, workshops and you are making them available free of cost, which is just a project of a spoken tutorial. So, you can also channelize these workshops. Uh, uh, by covering nearby colleges, ok. The next is, uh, uh, first uh, uh, college leader. So, what college leader is? Like, we will suggest that student, uh, any uh, BTEC student, any management student, any like science and non-science college student can come forward, he can participate, he should have to take responsibility that he is the person who will channelize this exercise or who will take control of this entire activity in his college covering from one department to another department. So, in a way earlier we have a campus ambassador program. So, now it is just like a self workshop manager program. So, a student will get a certification, he will get the exposure for that, that he is a part of the project, he is doing such kind of projects with IIT spoken tutorial. 
So, in a way he can get the experience of uh, and he will also groom at his own pace of time. Uh, the next is, yeah, uh, I have already mentioned you training the for, uh, training for teachers in colleges and schools to implement the project. Yes, it is first and mo foremost requirement this teacher should have to come forward. First, they will have to familiar, they will have to understood the entire process that how this workshop can be helpful, what are the pros and cons, and how it will be like uh, very much useful for their students for getting placements for getting ex uh, exposure in uh, recruitments and. Uh, and it will be how it will be helpful in academics as Madhukriti already told you about that. So, next is, yeah. See, now, uh, for uh, conducting such workshops, you do not need any such um, uh, big hours. Only 2 to 3 hours is required for particular FOSS training. So, we said, and it is also feasible from completely from your side that which date is uh, compatible you are with. And you have to give us a particular date with calendar and you have to give us a uh, particular time slot 2 to 3 hours only and as we have already mentioned that it is a self learning tool so in those 2 hours we will just train student that how you have to practice those tutorials and chapters in those 2 hours and later on they will have to cover at their own pace in their home so this is all about. and after there after that there is a assessment test that they have to come prepare for it and if their minimum is scoring 40 percent they will definitely surely they will get a e generated certificate from iit bombay next is yeah so here i mean madhukriti have already covered all the things uh, so uh, and we are here at spoken tutorial team uh, we are already there with you to assist to equip you in best possible manner and uh, we have not only uh, you can say uh, covered all over India, but uh, uh, we have our resource center model, we have promoter model. So, these two models are very well penetrating all the states uh, in Gujarat, in Maharashtra, in Himachal, in Bihar, in UP, everywhere. So, we are just uh, uh, putting more and more efforts that people should come, they should give that kind of zeal that yes, they are doing it uh, sincerely and they would like to become a part of it. So, uh, in that way we can just uh, make a sincere request to all you people sitting across that you can be a part of this project and uh, you can uh, put your contribution for uh, national mission on education that is our project called spoken tutorial. And in end while wrapping up I would like to thanks uh, professor sir, professor Gaitande sir that he have given us a uh, very uh, uh, you can say pressured, precious time of his and uh, we have just uh, winding up here and uh, kindly just uh, just to see on your screen there is a contact detail Madhukriti Srivastava and Mrs. Shyama here. So, you can directly uh, drop a mail to these two people uh, and uh, definitely we will get back to you. So, please uh, just jot it down anywhere you would like to and these two are details you can anytime just give us a, draw, a mail we will definitely call you back and uh, we will just mail you entire thing that how you can start and begin with in your college. Yeah, but just I am just giving over to Madhukriti. Actually, we cannot see you, but uh, we can feel your vibes, you know, and that you must be interested for this project. And we, and this can be happened, you know, through your mails, through your queries. And we'll assure you that within 24 hours of your mail, we'll revert you back. This is the best, you know, one of our Q, uh, USP. That the way we are, uh, you know, we are very, we like our customer a lot. We want you to learn this technology. That is why, as soon as you will mail us that you want to do this program, we'll definitely give you a call back through followed by an email. Please send us a query, a call that you want to do this program. We are happy to receive your call. So, now uh, I hope uh, Tyagaraja College in Tamil Nadu is watching this program and he, they are also a resource center and our own outreach officer Mohammed is sitting next to, next in that uh, cabin and listening this. Uh, Mohammed has done a great job in uh, flourishing Tamil Nadu. It was, his, this was his effort to, you know, roll out and making Tamil Nadu as a cream state having crossed 250 colleges, it is not only that colleges he has worked, he has worked with many or government organizations, many uh, companies 
uh, private firms and many uh, government organization where he was planning to rule out this program for whole Tamil Nadu. So because I cannot, he cannot come here because he is sitting in Tamil Nadu. I just want to say thanks to Mohammed. We want many more people like Mohammed because this is a society. This is a this is a social initiative. We need your support. We need a suggestion. We need a query from you that you are interested for the project and you want to make India IT literate. So from here, this uh, uh, word, I'm winding up. Uh, we are just playing a small PPT presentation, which will give you a idea about whatever we have done till date. It's covering the workshops, especially done by Mohammed and the places he has visited. Also, the we have used so many spaces, you know, to promote open source software, spoken to project through colleges, schools, NGO space. So here is a glimpse. Please watch this video.
I hope that you all have might seen uh, that where we have reached so far and uh, and it's a long way to go and we just hope that you will definitely put your step forward and become a part of this project uh, I hope this project uh, this project and this snapshot might have given you a bit inspiration and uh, and uh, how far we have achi achieved this uh, mission so just a uh, uh, request to all you people uh, sitting across that uh, put your step forward and be a part of this mission. Uh, we will be there to equip uh, you in every best possible manner. And finally, I just would like to uh, uh, just uh, would like to make uh, just gratify uh, Professor Gaitonde that he has given us this uh, time and to just uh, brief you about all that. Okay. Thank you so much.